Charlie Leuven, Part 6 of 7. You've already put big old tears in my eyes. Must you throw dirt in my face? Hey everybody, it's Marla sitting with NashvilleMusicSpace.com and I'm here with the living legend, Charlie Leuven. We have a mutual friend in the Oliver family and your um, Leuven brothers and the Charlie Leuven Museum is located at the Smokehouse on Mon Eagle Mountain there in the Trading Post. They're so proud of that and I know you are, so we would like to invite the fans out to see that and how does that feel to go in there and see all your memories on the wall? It's humbling. Really humbling. It's quite a tribute to you there. Uh, I'm basically <clears throat> uh, a, a slob. Sad songs tells my story. I've never been, I've never been divorced, and, and all these things that I sing about. But I can walk in the man's shoes that I sing about. And sometimes it just overwhelms me, and I turn around to the guitar band and say, play two verses for a turnaround, and then most times I can uh, pull out of it. But uh, with my uh, uh, unwanted illness, I, uh, I am even more, more so. Uh, I have trouble getting through uh, just simple songs. Uh, three years ago, I lost a, a tricolored Sheltie who taught herself more than most dogs could learn from anyone. And at, at nine years, nine and a half years old, her, her kidneys went kapoop and doctors couldn't do nothing. And I said, well, you guys are so doggone smart. How come you can't transplant a kidney? For my favorite dog. Ah, uh, he said, we don't do that down here, but if you've got fifteen thousand dollars, if you'll take her to Chicago, they'll do that for you. I guarantee you, if I'd have had the money, I would I would have headed for Chicago. But when I sing the song, my baby's gone. For some stupid reason, I associate that with not my sweetheart or nothing like that, but it's that dog. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes I really can't finish the song, so I just tag it and uh, go on to something more pleasant. So I have a bad tendency to, to uh, mar down in the, the other man's shoes that are losers. And I get stuck there. And uh, But uh, I think that you should be humble at times. I'm not saying that it's wrong, but it's embarrassing to me if I get to work out sing my own songs. More than anyone I've ever interviewed, this is an important question for me and for future generations of music. What career advice would you give for aspiring artists, singers, musicians? What should they do? I think, Marla, first and foremost, they should believe that they can do it. They have to believe that they can do it. Now you still hear some good music on the radio, girls and boys. And if you think you can do that, well, it's a pretty hard road to hold. Uh, but if you think and you can persevere, you can do it. But uh, it might come after you've tried hard as you could for five years, somebody just toss a song in your lap, see what you think of this song, and you do it, and it's an instant hit. And so all at once, then you become a superstar. And people think of you as an overnight success. But you might have been in the business 10 years, you just never could get recognized or get on a major label or whatever it takes. But uh, I think that they have to believe, and earlier on in our talkings, you, you uh, made the most truthful statement you could possibly make, that the song is the thing. Everything starts with the song. You can put the beautifulest arrangement on a 
song if it's a bad song. It'll just be a bad song with a beautiful arrangement. But uh, a, a hit song, don't give a hoot who sings it. If it's a hit song, whoever sings it will be a hit. And they don't come along that often. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for a show tonight? Let me hear you say yeah. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, straight from the Hall of Fame, from Country Music's Hall of Fame, the man who helped change lives and change music throughout history, gave Elvis Presley his phrasing, George Jones his voice, and on and on. The one and only and the great Charlie Luther. Let's go. Go see a movie once in a 